There's no shortage of disrespectful moments from Hell's Kitchen, but what happened in this episode in particular was totally unexpected. I know I don't give a I know The meme-worthy statement by Tonelli, I ain't no bitch, took the internet by storm. Well, Tonelli had a cold attitude from the very beginning. While one might assume that he was cocky because of his skills as a chef, he honestly wasn't all that. His high temperament was reflected from day one when Chef Ramsay asked him to taste his signature dish. Take a look at what happened. This right here is a roasted veal chop. Uh huh. With roasted green vegetables. Lovely color on there. Thank you. Uh -huh. And the vegetables? What a shame the Brussels sprouts are rock hard. Are they supposed to be that crunchy? No. Uh -huh. Have a little taste for me, please? Absolutely. You got a fork? You can buy that. You're a big boy. I'm not an animal. Things escalated to a whole other level when he tried to fight Chef Ramsay. One way or another, Tonelli was bound to blow up. During the deliberations, when Chef Ramsay asked them to name two nominees, Tonelli replied with, they can speak for themselves. Who's the first nominee for the men? They can speak for themselves, but they know who they are. But as you may already know, this isn't how the show works. Take a quick look at what happened next. I ask the questions, you give the answers. I ain't here for that. You wanna hack it? You wanna talk some shit? Let's go step outside. I ain't here for that, dog. You wanna talk about fighting? Oh, wow. You wanna get rough? Do you think I'm scared? Huh? Look at you. Yeah, keep you just blow your. Cameras. Yeah, the cameras. Yeah? Yeah. We can step Are you standing here? I asked you one simple question, and you couldn't answer me. And then you want to get all tough and up close and personal. There you go. Now imagine what would have happened if a fight had actually broken out. Tonelli wouldn't have stood a chance. Guess he forgot that the famous chef holds a black belt in karate. So the only thing that Tonelli managed to do with all that rage was produce a glorious meme of himself. But this story has its own twists. Most fans believe that the whole drama was staged. This led to a lot of debates over the matter. Some viewers claim that Tonelli was planted to boost the show's ratings. Needless to say, the show's producers slammed these claims immediately. They added that the show could be very stressful and can bring out the worst from its contestants. According to an anonymous source from the set, chefs that are eliminated from the show get a psychological evaluation. Additionally, they're pampered with massages and other services to help them get back into their normal life. Tonelli has the shortest tenure record for any contestant in the history of Hell's Kitchen. While Tonelli had the potential to be a great chef, thanks to his arrogance, he was thrown off his high horse. But this chef, on the other hand... As a surprise entry, the courteous and polite Jean-Philippe makes his way onto our list. Philippe is hands down the most favorite maitre d'eux on Hell's Kitchen, and when he left the show, several fans were upset. From trying to motivate contestants to charming us with his smile, there have been times when Jean-Philippe has even shown his angry side. In the second episode of season 6, Jean-Philippe had a heated argument with Van Hurd. That night, Hurd was working at the table side station. Any chef who works at that station is bound to coordinate with both the restaurant manager or maitre d'eux and the chefs in the kitchen. However, Hurd was not ready to listen. It all started when Jean-Philippe was trying to help Hurd with his table, but instead of just listening to him, Hurd did this. What is going on with these two? This led to an argument between the two, and this is what Chef Ramsay did. What is going on? I'm telling you, I need both of you. Calm down. I don't need one shrimp special urgently, but keep it cool in front of these customers, and you keep it cool. Is that clear? A little later, Hurd made a dumb mistake. He went to the red table instead of the blue one. Hurd clearly missed the red plates on the table. When Jean-Philippe raised the issue about Hurd, Chef Ramsay said, How y'all doing tonight? Chef, he's going to the wrong table. Oh, no. Van! Come here! That's the red table. You're running the blue. Hey, bozo. Give me one scampi special on the right table. Yes, sir. And then the most hilarious thing happens. What's the matter between you two? There's a language barrier there. What do you mean there's a language barrier? He's speaking English, you dick. I know he's from Texas. However, the situation between the two intensified. Heard because of his clumsiness, dropped both of his pans and rushed into the kitchen to get a fresh one. Seeing that, Jean-Philippe said, Come on, we're gonna try that again. I'm sorry. I gotta go get a pan, okay? I will be right back. Don't get in trouble. <laughs> behind, behind. Don't run in the restaurant, please. John Philippe. You better stop trying to tell me what to do. I know that. I'm going to explode, my friend. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. Listen to me. Before things got even crazier, Chef Ramsay intervened and did this. Hey, both of you, come here. Both of you, come here. Now. 
What is going on? He's got no respect. Don't What's shout! On? We're in front of the customers now! I'm sorry, chef. He's not respecting this dining room, chef. Calm down, listen to him, and you pay a little bit of respect. And if you do your job, and you do your job, we'll come together. Because right now, you're turning the whole place upside down. Chef Ramsay somehow managed to get Philip and her to calm down, but this contestant from New Jersey had a mouth that was bigger than her talent. Throughout season 15, Jackie Fuchs, thanks to her foul mouth, had a rivalry with almost everyone. There was no doubt that her teammates wanted her booted from the competition. In the 10th episode, the red team was having an awful night. With one mistake following the other, Chef Ramsay was done and kicked them out of the kitchen. Seeing this, the blue team pulled up their socks, bounced back, and gave it their best. Surprisingly, despite winning the challenge, Joe Ritchie from the blue team was eliminated for his inconsistent performances. Kristen Barone was shocked because she was expecting Fuchs to be thrown out. Back at the dorms, Fuchs, of course, couldn't resist mocking Barone, and this is what she said. Why are you voting for me? Who do you want me to vote for? Them two, they f up service and made us lose. They f kill it in service every f goddamn time. When you are in service, you shine as a cook. Challenges is where you shine as a chef. We cannot carry you through challenges, bro. I've only been cooking for three months. Listening to that, this is how Baroni replied. Wait a minute, what? Jackie's only been cooking for three months? Everyone else has been cooking forever. We deserve this, and obviously Jackie doesn't. But that means you're not ready for BLT. I got f oh, seven, yeah, I'm I got, ready for BLT. I got seven years on you and six months. Barone even expressed how angry she was with Fuchs and how disgusted she was with her for not being humble. Take a look at what happened next. Chris, give me your lighter. No. Give me your lighter. Talk like you touch my lighter, I will punch you in the face. Punch me in the give face. me my lighter, Jackie. Punch me in the face. Jackie, give me my lighter. Punch me in the face. Either light your cigarette or give me my lighter. However, Fuchs wasn't done and her childish behavior led to a huge argument. Fuchs once again taunted Barone to hit her. Take a look at what she did next. Piece of Piece of hands out. out of my Put face. Put your hands on me. Barone could have certainly hit her for what she did, but instead, this is how she reacted. Like, I'm so over her causing a big scene. Like, I don't know who the you are, what garbage can that you got dragged out of, but what the is wrong with you? And that's why Barone went ahead to the finals, while Fuchs didn't even make it to the Black Jackets phase. While this cat fight could have gotten a lot worse, nothing could prepare you for this discussion from season 12 that led to a huge brawl. As you might expect, nobody likes to go up for elimination as it's evident that one of them is going to be sent home. But before that even happens, the team is forced to zero in on their weakest link. While most of these discussions almost always lead to arguments, this particular one turned out to be extreme. In the third episode of season 12, the red team and blue teams had an awful service. It was so awful that both teams were kicked out of the kitchen and were named joint losers. As both teams discussed who should be sent up for elimination, things went in a different direction for the blue team. Jason Zapoltis lost his cool. So how exactly did this all start? Things were going alright when the team considered Michael DeMarco as their first nominee. However, when Michael Gabriel suggested that Chris Eversole be the next nominee, this is what Eversole said. I know I could have done better, but Mike, he's poison for the team. Keep DeMarco, keep me, but get f Mike out of here. Eversole even requested that the team consider Mike Aresta over their other choices since he did nothing that night. If I'm getting all the elements composed, you're seasoning fish at this point, and that's all you did for me. It's not exactly like Eversole was lying or throwing Aresta under the bus. His accusation was absolutely right. Of course, Aresta didn't like that, so he gave his opinion. Chris wanted to fucking be the first guy to leave. Since that didn't go down so well, a huge argument broke out. You know, that's not like one person just works than the other, doesn't you idiot? If you don't see me do something, you're my man. You're listening to every order being called out and you're watching what my hands are doing. All right, the guy that's cooking, both is of you are responsible. responsible. Yeah. But if he's saying that he didn't do it right, you're his backbone. He's been sabotaging us, dude. He sucks so bad. The situation got far worse when Zapaltis said this to Aresta. Go back to the grocery store. I go to back to the grocery man. store. Yo, get off now, fucking. What followed was a war of words between Zapoltis and Aresta. Oh, 
Jimmy, you're better than me, you motherfucking piece of shit. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Seriously, fuck you. Before things got ugly, Scott Cummings and Anton Testino intervened and things finally cooled off. No! Hey, Mike! Mike, 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 Come on, not worth it. He doesn't need work to the glasses. I know, exactly. Dude, you have to talk all the shit you want, bro. Guys, listen. After all that, Simone Hammond volunteered to be eliminated. Before leaving, she said, I'm normally really energetic and lively, and since I have been feeling well, I think I've come across as very soft and not someone who can fight. And even the biggest, most wonderful things sometimes don't turn out to be the best for you. That was an easy one. Wish granted. While that argument was absolutely unnecessary and a colossal waste of energy, this contestant from Florida was insufferable in not one, but two seasons. Robin Amadevar's rivalry and behavior with everyone in seasons 10 and 17 was insufferable. But honestly, her behavior in season 10 stooped down to a whole other level. She first fought with the red team and then picked a fight with almost everyone in the blue team. While there are too many arguments to bring up, there was one that got really intense. In the 10th episode of the 10th season, the red team was kicked out of the kitchen because of their continuous mistakes. Alma DeVore's relationship with Kimmy Willis was already sour, and that night both of them were arguing during the service as well. Back at the dorms, instead of figuring out what went wrong, Alma DeVore started complaining about Willis for screwing up that night. The two fish I told was told five minutes, so I fired them. The meats were off on the counts. I am so livid right now. Oh my god, all hell is gonna break loose. Seeing the ridiculous behavior, Christina Wilson did this. Over it, dude. I'm over it. I'm so tired of her bitching. It's just too much. It literally drives me nuts. A huge argument broke out between Alma Devar and Willis when Willis tried to defend herself. Because when Kimmy works in the station, she doesn't communicate. So you throw me on the bus? I'm not throwing you on the bus. I'll tell you what I heard. Come on. I'll tell you exactly Come what on, I heard. Come on, tell me then. Come on. Kimmy, you better step the Bitch, I ain't stepping nowhere. You think I'm scared of you? I'm not scared of you. You're throwing me under the bus. Cool, bitch. It's cool. cool. You call me a bitch today, and you want me to keep my mouth shut? That's when Alma DeVar put the blame on Wilson. Things were getting crazy, and finally when the team discussed who should be up for elimination, Willis suggested Alma DeVar. Take a look at what happened next. How many of my mistakes came back to her? call was off. All no, my call wasn't. Your ears need to be cleaned out, bitch. You better watch who hey, hey, hey. bitch. Thanks to Wilson and Barbie Marshall's timely intervention, the argument was put to rest. But that was only for a moment. During the deliberations, when Alma DeVar was named as the second nominee, it led to another round of arguments right in front of Chef Ramsay's face. Our second nominee chef is Robin, because she pretty much lied to you and told you that she cooked the fish for three minutes and she cooked it for seven. I didn't lie to you, chef, when I said I took the fish out at three minutes. The fish was cooked seven minutes prior, so I miscommunication on what I said, but I did not lie to you. Take a look at why the famous chef transferred Alma Devar to the blue team. Why do you think you should stay in Hell's Kitchen? I, I feel like I should stay in he Hell's Kitchen because I have more fight in me. I have not given up. I, I'm here, but I want to be here. I do have standards, but I drop off my standards sometimes because I'm trying to save someone ass besides myself. This is the kind Thank of God. that goes on, chef. This is why I hate working on the red team. I prefer to be on the blue team. They're gonna kick your ass? No, they won't because they respect me because I come in here with 250 percent. Despite the blue team's displeasure, Alma DeVar got away with her sour attitude and finished things off in sixth place. But in Hell's Kitchen, it's not just the contestants who have attitude issues. This customer from season one attacked Jean-Philippe. Whether you realize it or not, restaurants are filled with high amounts of drama. But most of the time, all the drama is within the boundaries of the kitchen. However, sometimes the wait times are way too long and customers begin to show their frustration. Really, the only people who face the complaints are the ones at the front of house, and in this case, we're referring to Jean-Philippe. In the second episode of season 1, during the dinner service, both teams put up an awful service. They were slow, were making mistakes, lacked communication, and weren't working together. There was absolutely no coordination. Since hardly any food was being sent out, customers were getting impatient. In the middle of the service, one of the customers decided to handle the situation by themselves, and as expected, it didn't go very well. Just take a look at what happens. Excuse me, we've been waiting for food for about 2 hours and 45 minutes now. And we were curious about that. Yeah, well, you're a clever girl, aren't you? It's a new restaurant. Yeah, it's been a tough night. It's been two hours and 45 minutes. Yes. Right. Anything else? So, why don't you... Asparagus, please. 
Meanwhile, another customer from the same table decided to take matters into his own hands. Seeing that, Jean-Philippe immediately tried to handle the arrogant customers. But this is what happened. You, you can't. What? You, you don't no. tell me I can't. No, I'm seriously. Look, I want some you, food, you, man. You, you, you can't. Know. By, by, by law, yeah. by law. I, I wish your education could be as good as your, as your voice. Huh? When the customer wasn't backing down and was boasting about his doctorate, this is what Jean-Philippe said. I have a doctorate in music from the University of Southern California. Yes, do you, you know. have a doctorate? I do have an education. What followed next is unbelievable. Take a look at this. Then you are less educated would, than me, so I don't would. get in my face! The customers were then kicked out of the restaurant by the crew. And after seeing the whole ordeal, Chef Ramsay shut down the kitchen for the night. But what this contestant did stirred up some major trouble within their team. Do you want to know the yeah. truth? Yeah, I do want to know the truth. I have no faith that he's going to be able to get the sides out. And this contestant right here stirred up some major trouble in Season 9. Clearly, we as a community don't talk much about Elizabeth Bianchi as much as we should. While names like Robin, Tiffany, Jason, and Frank often top lists like this one, Elizabeth almost always gets away without so much as a mention. But this video is about to change your opinion of her. Yeah, so I'm talking about the 20-year reunion planning challenge where Elizabeth was unfortunately chosen as the red team's representative. But guess what? None of them could see what was coming for them. First, let's talk about the theme. We were thinking maybe we could recreate Hawaiian wow. luau. That would be fun. Yeah, uh-huh. Sounds delicious, right? But Elizabeth decided to say screw it to the entire thing and did whatever the hell she wanted by switching to Asian flavors. Yeah, because Hawaiian or Asian, who cares, right? But hold on tight because things were about to get real cringeworthy. Elizabeth shocked the committee members with her dim-wittedness and the preparations hadn't even started yet. Like a surf and turf. I, Not for no. me. Damn, the guests were left stunned. And I think you could imagine the awkward silence that followed. But that was just the beginning. When it was time to cook, Elizabeth knowingly gave her teammates the wrong information. They wanted Asian, so I would definitely want to do appetizer. Bacon wraps, like scallops, is really nice. Like, I can hardly believe it myself, and I've watched this clip hundreds of times. And to make matters even worse, she added bacon wrapped scallops to the menu, much to Jamie's dismay. I don't know where the lentils came from. They're not Asian. I was confused if she really did have the right details or not. I mean, what was she even trying to do here? It's not like she was trying to throw someone specific under the bus. Didn't she realize that she too was a part of it? Either way, during the entire time, not once did she mention to anyone what the actual theme was about. And I think that speaks volumes about her character. And then, as if things couldn't get any worse, Chef Ramsay himself stepped in to reveal the actual theme of the challenge, and BAM! The theme is Hawaiian. I don't know where she came up with Asian. The red team was in shock and disbelief. They had completely missed the mark thanks to Elizabeth's failure to communicate this crucial detail. Needless to say, Elise was in distress, Jamie was petrified, and the rest of the team looked like absolute fools. But you'd be about as big as a fool as Elizabeth if you thought the drama ended right here. After Elizabeth's disastrous move in the reunion planning challenge, the spotlight shifted to Natalie and Carrie during the appetizer round. Carrie's ahi tuna tartare with chili-infused avocado mousse received mixed reviews. While the tuna was praised, the guacamole was criticized for being very overpowering. But the most obvious remark was yet to come. Fish and the guacamole. I like them each separately. I don't know about together, but maybe a little well, whatever y'all want to work heavy. out for you. But hold on, because things were about to get even wilder. Krupa stepped up with a dish that was completely off theme. A nut-crusted pork loin with lentils and blanche bok choy? Well, in all fairness, they did, didn't they? Although Krupa's off-theme dish might have tasted great, Chef Ramsay couldn't help but point out the obvious. Yeah, think of the why, I don't think of lentils. Leave it to Gordon to keep everyone on their toes, right? And then there was Elise, serving up those scallops with bacon as I've already pointed out. Once again, Chef Ramsay did not hesitate to get in Elizabeth's face about it. I was under the impression that like we, we could mix them, I'm sorry. Eventually, all thanks to Elizabeth's failed leadership, the red team ended up losing the challenge 0-3. And if they could have gotten negative points, I'm sure they would have. It was a tough blow for them, but let's give credit where it's due, the blue team definitely deserved that win, no questions asked. Because at least they were somewhat on theme. I'm surprised the judges even went ahead with the tasting, considering the red team wasn't even serving what they asked for. Anyway, when it was time for the punishment, the red team was in for a rough but completely deserved ride. They had to not only deck out the dining room for the reunion dinner service, but also clean up both kitchens and even decorate the cake. And the red team must have been fuming, considering all of this could have been avoided if Elizabeth wasn't at the helm. And you better believe that Elise was the most pissed off out of everyone in the room. 
But if she was a pescatarian, I'm sure she mentioned it and that was something that should have been told to the team. She had to have been really struggling to keep herself from throwing Elizabeth out the window. But Elizabeth was sticking to her delusions like glue, and Elise immediately fired back with the bacon incident and the pescatarian problem over it. But Elizabeth wasn't about to take all the blame without a fight. She fired back, putting the responsibility on her teammates for not stepping up against the blue team. She even went as far as blaming Elise wholly for the team's failure. Your scallops were undercooked, Elise. Wait, what? Like, you've got to be a special kind of delusional to be this stubborn when your entire team and Chef Ramsay himself are telling you that you were in the wrong. Despite her desperate attempts to make amends by creating Hawaiian Lays, a bunch of pretty flowers were going to fix what Elizabeth broke, right? But now, let's discuss this for a bit. Reddit pretty much went wild dissecting each and every move that Elizabeth made. While some of them thought that she was forgetful throughout the competition, that wasn't the case in the Hawaiian Cuisine Challenge. She had deliberately decided to switch things over for her own convenience. Some of them even came forward in support of Elizabeth, saying that this had to be some sort of editing trick or something. But hey, she literally said it herself. This was long before the AI takeover, so they couldn't have put those words in her mouth at that time, nor made the red team be that far off base. Now, let me make it clear. Although Asian cuisine, specifically Japanese flavors, are pretty popular in Hawaii, it's not native to the place. So forgetful or not, let's accept that Elizabeth was entirely in the wrong no matter which way you slice it. But here comes yet another contestant who decided to change the menu to fit his needs, but in a completely different way. You better understand one fucking thing. You do not decide what goes out of this kitchen. In episode 2 of season 8, Vinny decided to use his charm to manipulate the customers into ordering the dishes of his choice. But here's what bothers me. Despite his questionable behavior, he somehow managed to stick around in the competition without facing elimination. You see, Vinny was supposed to assist the head chef of the blue team for the night. However, he had other plans in mind. After spending time with Raj, he decided to throw the rulebook out the window and cheated without any regard for the consequences. Not only did Vinny break the rules, but his memory was also incredibly slow. It took him a staggering 30 minutes just to send his first ticket to Chef Ramsay. I don't know what Vinny's doing, but I need some tickets in here, yes? Yeah, Chef. Is that table 20? No, table 20 is right there. The first one? What the hell? That's quite a delay for a high-pressure kitchen environment, huh? The famous chef obviously wasn't pleased with Vinny's actions. He accused them of sabotaging the blue team's chances, but Vinny played the innocent card like a seasoned pro. Now, understand what you're doing. Own up to it. Uh, yes, chef. He seemed to have an odd knack for deflecting the blame and avoiding the consequences of his actions. To make matters worse, during the service, Vinny continued to drag his feet, slowing down the entire kitchen. His lack of efficiency must have been frustrating for both his fellow contestants and Chef Ramsay. But what happened next was just unbelievable. If you guys order sides, you're gonna be here till next Tuesday. Well, I have zero confidence that Raj is getting out. Garnishes and side. Vinny, assigned to be a waiter, decided to discard etiquette and took it upon himself to dictate what the customers should eat instead of simply taking their orders and relaying them to the kitchen. It's remarkable how he managed to convince one of his tables to skip ordering sides, all because of his distrust in Raj. Not exactly what you'd expect of a true team player, huh? But it seems like James caught wind of Vinny's rule-breaking behaviors and decided to inform Chef Ramsay about it. And let me tell you, the famous chef was furious. Shut up! So he said they could not have sides and entrees because it would no, take too long. Nice. However, guess what? Vinny decided to deflect the blame onto someone who had no idea what was happening. Poor guy got chewed out for doing his damn job. You told him that. Don't push the sides, so I look good. I'm ready with the sides. Look, I got all the sides ready. It was probably the first time he had everything under control and Chef Ramsay was berating him for it. I can't imagine how it must have made him feel at the time. Anyway, the famous chef wasn't so dumb to be deceived. He shifted his focus back to Vinny and, well, it's safe to say that his plan backfired. I have no faith that he's going to be able to get the sides out. Vinny certainly got what he deserved for his deceitful actions. It's always satisfying to see justice served on Hell's Kitchen. Honestly, it's a bit ridiculous that Vinny was playing the victim in a situation that he had created himself. But suddenly, something crazy happened. You have no right to recommend to the guests not to have a side with an entree. I can only imagine the shock and confusion among the other contestants and the viewers when Chef Ramsay unexpectedly called Vinny out. It certainly seemed like Vinny's time on the show was going to come to an end, but Chef Ramsay had other plans in mind. The famous chef is known for being pretty unpredictable. So maybe it's possible that he saw something in Vinny and that made him want to give him another opportunity to prove himself. Had it been for me, I'd have eliminated Vinny right then and there. Not for cheating with the menu, no, but for trying to pin it on Raj of all people. Let's get some Raj love in the comments, guys. Poor guy certainly needs it.
Anyway, up next, here comes a contestant who tried to hide her mistakes by accusing Chef Ramsay of all people. Uh-huh, let's see how that goes for her. Somebody accused me of sabotaging their garnish and attempt to soil my reputation. So Jen was beaming with confidence at the garnish station, but quickly faced rejection when sous chef Jockey rejected her dish. Two, season. Jen fiercely argued in her defense, claiming that she had seasoned the dish properly. And what's more, she accused sous chef Jockey of damaging his own palate. I don't even gotta taste your food. I need to taste, taste it. it. There's my food. Right there. You gotta taste it. On top of that, she went as far as suggesting that there was enough salt to outright induce cardiac arrest. When the famous chef called her over for a refire, she showed him attitude instead. Young lady. What am I doing wrong now, chef? It's, it's hard. Don't it's talk to me like that. But she didn't stop there. Instead, continued with a bitter tone, which led to a heated exchange. I mean, because I see you looking with the look on your face. I mean, I'm okay. Hey, young yeah, lady, yeah. who do you think you're talking to? Unfortunately for Jen, sous chef Jockey was proven right in the end. That is embarrassing. You don't know how to season food? Jen's struggles in the kitchen definitely caused a lot of frustration for her team. Despite brief moments of efficiency, she soon found herself slowing down the veterans and failing to communicate effectively with T and Brett. This led to chaos during the service, with the team getting increasingly frustrated. In one particular heated exchange with T, Jen felt like her teammates were mocking her for being the odd one out. She even sent out portions of undercooked leeks for two duck entrees, which didn't sit well with Chef Ramsay. He was clearly not in the mood for her attitude at that moment. I gave you the creamy leek, Chef, that- Oh, you need more. Hey, hey, all of you, run up here with me a minute. What followed next goes down as one of the most heated meltdowns in Hell's Kitchen history. You come threw in. that under there, I gave come you here. enough leaks. You trying to clown me up in here come right in. now. Come no, you trying come to clown in. me in here right no. now. There were a series of accusations, and they were all targeted towards Chef Ramsay himself. It must have been quite the heated exchange, huh? Ultimately, Jen was shown the door but expressed no regrets. She knew that she had a business waiting for her back at home, and even humorously wished that she had told Chef Ramsay to shove her blue jacket up his ass and cough out blueberries. Quite the statement, huh? But as always, Chef Ramsay had the final word. He stated, Jen accused me of sabotaging her. The truth of the matter is, the only thing that sabotaged Jen tonight was her cooking. Strong words from Chef Ramsay, huh? Emphasizing the importance of skill and performance in the kitchen. Amen to that! But here comes a contestant who left Chef Ramsay feeling down in the dumps after disobeying him on national television. It was one of the most shocking things I've ever experienced in Hell's Kitchen. So this all happened during the part where everything was going smoothly. I personally believe that Joy was totally rocking the fish station. She actually had Chef Ramsay's confidence and trust as well. But then things took a turn for the worse when Melanie messed up her dish. Chef Ramsay wanted Joy's honest opinion on Melanie's capellini and boy did Joy not hold back. Lam, that butter, that cilantro, it was missing everything. Moving on to the main course, Joy was in charge of coordinating with Rochelle and Jason on the timing. But you know what happened? In the midst of all the excitement, Joy got a bit too ahead of herself and started cooking the halibut before Rochelle was ready with her Wellingtons. The famous chef had to jump in and remind her that the sauce had to come first with no pausing or rewinding allowed. Despite all the frustration and juggling multiple tasks, Joy managed to redeem herself with a second attempt that passed Chef Ramsay's scrutiny. And, well, it made its way to the eagerly awaiting diners. Pretty impressive, right? Now this is where things really took a turn for Joy in the competition. So, on the next order, she failed to give Rochelle a clear time, and this got on Chef Ramsay's nerves. Joy, we can go in two minutes with this chicken? No. Three minutes? Talk, Joy! Whether you like it or not, you're just holding the whole kitchen up. But wait, it gets even more interesting. Later on, when Chef Ramsay asked about the timing on the garnishes, Jason requested 90 seconds. However, Joy impulsively sent the halibut to the pass without considering anyone else's input. I need the garnish for the halibut before the halibut. I know, Chef. Well, if you know, why doesn't Joy know? Seriously, I don't understand why she would be so ignorant at a crucial point in the competition. It's mind-boggling. Chef Ramsay, clearly irritated, had to emphasize once again how vital it is for the garnish to come before the halibut. I mean, it's surprising that he even had to patiently explain that to her. I would like the garnish for the halibut before the halibut. Yes or no? Wanna pick an argument? I'm ready. But instead of showing any understanding, Joy responded with even more attitude, and can you believe it, she even walked away from Chef Ramsay. Talk about a tense moment. Chef Ramsay, not one to back down, certainly warned Joy not to let her bad mood affect his food. But brace yourselves, because you won't believe what Joy did next. I'm done. You're done. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I'm done with it. She actually gave up. I mean, I can't believe she quit so easily. 
Even when Rochelle and Melanie pleaded with her not to, she just removed her jacket, headed back to the dorms, and packed her bags. Crazy, right? But the drama just kept coming. After Joy stormed off and quit, Chef Ramsay actually followed her and didn't hold back in criticizing her selfish attitude for giving up over a single mistake. With accusations flying from both sides, the emotions were running high. You're arguing, you're shouting. I'm done. Hey, I know you've done it. Get out. Back at the dorms, as Joy packed her clothes, she felt completely overwhelmed by Chef Ramsay's reaction. Sous Chef Andy, being the voice of reason, questioned Joy about the incident. You're not listening. You're giving me I'm not giving you attitude. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you what it is. Well, Joy tried to explain herself, but Sous Chef Andy reminded her that Chef Ramsay's behavior was nothing new and is a part of his tough approach. Joy acknowledged that the competition had brought out an ugly side of her, but sous chef Andy emphasized that Chef Ramsay's strictness comes from his desire to bring out the best in his contestants. But here's the heartbreaking part. Even though she had a chance to possibly make a comeback, Joy doubted her confidence and ultimately decided against it, believing it was too late. She recognized that she had thrown away a golden opportunity, which I completely agree with. It's such a shame to see someone with so much potential give up like that. In Joy's exit interview, she had to watch a montage of her time on the show, which culminated in the burning of her portrait. Five out of five. She said, I made a best friend while I was here. Get off me, Mississippi, your old country ass. It was a tough moment for sure. But perhaps the toughest moment of all was Chef Ramsay's comments about her decision to quit. He said, Joy's decision to quit was one of the most surprising moments in Hell's Kitchen history. Her lack of maturity tonight shows that she isn't ready to be a head chef, as true leaders never give up. It was a pretty harsh statement, but I think it really emphasized the importance of never giving up and always striving to be your best in the kitchen. Now, what happened in this episode led to the greatest showdown of all time. Stupid bitch. You didn't have to do anything else. Just Shut up! Up! Shut up! Shut the fuck up! And get out there! And what better way than to start with someone who brought the entire kitchen to a standstill? I'm just so sick of stupid bitches. Every time I work in a kitchen with women. Simply put, her work ethic was non-existent. During prep before the first service, Lacey's method of working didn't sit well with her teammates. She appeared reluctant to start on a station until she knew where everyone else was. And here I am struggling to understand why it even mattered to her. Anyway, to make matters worse, her continuous complaints during prep got on Andrea's nerves. And as if that wasn't bad enough, Lacey became unsure about what to do and suddenly left in the middle of prep. That is when she declared she was giving up. I don't want to do this shit anymore. I really don't. I mean, why did she even bother entering the competition? Because her decision understandably enraged her teammates even further. She said I quit. Stick a fork in her. She doesn't have a lot of confidence. If you don't have faith in yourself, what the fuck makes you think we are? Even though she did eventually come back to the Red Kitchen, the damage was done. LA, in particular, was still visibly upset with Lacey for shirking her responsibilities and walking away when things got too tough. This action severely undermined team cohesion and trust. It really only cast Lacey as unreliable and lacking the resilience required in a high-pressure kitchen environment. Of course, now I'm definitely the most hated and, you know, whatever. Just five minutes before the service, Koi requested Lacey's assistance with the souffles, but she failed to show up. And this led to a major argument. This station is fucked up. Come on, Koi. Don't say a fucking thing. The famous chef had to play referee and intervene to calm the situation down. I'm just about to open the doors. I'm not asking you two to be lovers, okay? Absolutely. Calm down, get a grip, and show me some form of composure, yes? But despite her repeated threats to quit and her refusal to help her team during the punishments, she managed to avoid elimination somehow. Even after the third disastrous service, she remained safe, all thanks to G's act of bravery. But like, imagine a world where G didn't twist her ankle and have to leave the competition. I know for a fact that we wouldn't be talking about her for this long, at least. Anyway, back at the dorms, tensions between Andrea and Lacey boiled over. Andrea didn't hold back in expressing her feelings. I'll tell you what, you had a saving grace tonight, you better fucking prove yourself. Right. Lacey retaliated, accusing Andrea in return. You what just you turned on your fire? bitch switch. Andrea didn't take that very well and fired back, pointing out that this switch in attitude was always triggered by Lacey's behavior. Things heated up even more when Andrea raised some questions of her own. Couldn't Lacey have fell and fucking twisted her ankle? It was a harsh but honest exchange. Koi also weighed in, reminding everyone of the loss of one of their strongest chefs that night. But Andrea and LA weren't holding back at all, questioning whether Lacey truly deserved to stay. We lost one of our best team members. Do you think you deserve to be here? Do you, Do you seriously think you deserve to be sitting right there? Yeah. 
Feeling frustrated by everyone ganging up on her, Lacey finally reached her breaking point. Want me to go quit right now? Huh? See? You they know what? what? They never shut the f up about it. But as expected, her attitude did not improve even after being moved to the blue team. During the punishment after losing the leftovers challenge, Lacey's lack of participation stood out glaringly among the men. Between rolling out cookie dough, this is gonna take off freaking day. She spent most of her time standing around, complaining about the workload, and describing it as terrible. When assigned to handle the top up plates, she appeared lost and unsure where to place them, despite clear instructions from Robert. None of these people here treat me like an equal. Where am I going? I don't know, Lacey. I mean, somewhere where you can polish it. As the blue team continued prepping, Jay noticed Lacey's mistake. She actually forgot to remove the paper from a tray before putting it in the oven. When Robert pointed out her error, it led to, you guessed it, yet another heated argument. I fucked up, and it's not your fucking problem. You need problem. to stop right now and listen to what we're trying to tell you. Tensions rose further as Robert expressed his wish for Lacey to leave, albeit not in those exact words. To use a Jedi mind trick and just choke the shit out of that bitch mentally. This prompted Lacey to challenge him to speak directly rather than muttering. She then threatened to quit if another argument ensued. I'm not fight if I fight with anybody right now, I'm leaving. I swear to God. You're what? Completely unfazed, Jay gave her the go-ahead to leave if she wanted to, even offering to take over her tasks. Meanwhile, Ben struggled to keep his cool as Lacey stormed out of the kitchen, adding to the chaos. Use your head, baby. Come on. Push this I back. I don't know what's in your fucking dish. Oh, I hate you guys. Now, how many of you were surprised that she made it this far into the competition? Because God knows I am. Next, I want to talk about the sixth service of the sixth season. Here's hoping that another six doesn't show up in this section. Tanil, what's all this spinach for? I know you're wearing glasses. Come here. Why is all this spinach cooked like this? Anyway, Tanil found herself at the Garner station when a hiccup occurred when they prepared too much spinach. In the heat of the moment, Chef Ramsay's frustration boiled over, leading to the unflattering term. Put the spinach to order, you lazy cow. Chef Ramsay needs to learn how to show some respect, especially when I'm up there working hard. I'm with them on this one. Totally team to Neil. What about you? Fuck you. He's a disrespectful British motherfucker. As the night progressed, trouble brewed in the kitchen when the mashed potatoes adhered stubbornly to the pot. And, well, the quantity fell short for a two-person serving. Fuck off, Belia. It's not enough. You just gotta find something to bitch about. In an attempt to avoid the previous mistake of serving extra portions, Tanil and her teammate faced Chef Ramsay's stern rebuke. He accused them of treating the situation lightly. It's so bizarre. Whether this is a joke or an act for you, why did you send me that pan with no mashed potato in Chef, there? Chef, the other orders I put up lighter. So now you've gone back the other way with fuck all in there. This criticism proved to be too much for Tanil, who retaliated by calling Chef Ramsay himself crap. Because you're crap. You're crap. Oh, damn. The shock resonated through their teammates as Chef Ramsay swiftly ejected them from the kitchen. A fight started brewing in the back store, with Chef Ramsay issuing a stern warning against disrespect. Let me do my Don't job! Don't you dare turn around and tell me that I'm fucking crap. You my ass. off through those doors! That's you right. You can dish it, but you can't that take it! Instead of seeing it as the pure rebellion that it probably was, Chef Ramsay sensed the passion behind their words. It was like he realized that they weren't just throwing a tantrum, but was genuinely passionate about cooking. By the way, you cannot forget about the chef who told Chef Ramsay off and lived to tell the tale. No, not Joseph, he was just a bitch. In particular, I want to rewind to the second service of that season. Van brought his unique energy to the tableside shrimp scampi service, and Jean-Philippe approached him to offer him some advice. But Van, in his characteristic assertive manner, was not receptive to the interference. Listen, listen to me. I'm listening. Even look at what I'm me. working. I'm gonna give you some... I'm in action here. He promptly and very aggressively informed Jean-Philippe that he was focused on his work. Chef Ramsay, observing the tension between the two, intervened by stepping into the dining room and urged them to maintain composure in front of the customers. Both of you calm down, but keep it cool in front of these customers, and you keep it cool. Is that clear? Table okay. Later on, Van selected his cart and approached the table designated for the red team. This prompted Jean-Philippe to report the incident to Chef Ramsay. Chef, he's going to the wrong table. Oh no. Van! Come here! The famous chef, addressing Van at the hot plate, instructed him to deliver a scampi special to the correct table. Seizing the opportunity, Chef Ramsay inquired about the apparent tension between Van and Jean-Philippe. In response, Van offered the explanation that there was a perceived language barrier. What do you mean there's a language barrier? He's speaking English, you dick. I know because he's from Texas. <laughs> Chef Ramsay trying to hold his laughter in cracks me up. Shortly thereafter, Van was engrossed in preparing his scampi appetizers, so much so that he dropped them on the floor not once, but twice. I'm sorry. 
I gotta go get a pan, okay? I will be right back. Don't get in trouble. Returning to the kitchen for another pan, Jean-Philippe advised Van not to run in the dining room, a suggestion that Van found disagreeable. Listen to me! Listen! Listen! Listen to me! The confrontation intensified, prompting Chef Ramsay to intervene by pulling both individuals into the pantry. Come here. Fuck you. Fuck you. Come here. Now! I'm gonna fuck you up, bro. I genuinely thought that he would throw hands, considering, you know, he's the son of an ex-WWE star, Luna Vachon. Thank God there wasn't a top rope anywhere near them. Anyway, Jean-Philippe expressed his concern about Van's lack of respect for the dining room, but Van, seemingly indifferent, shrugged off Jean-Philippe's remarks. No respect. Don't shout! Wait for the customers now! I'm sorry, Chef. He's not respecting this dining room, Chef. Chef Ramsay reprimanded both parties and urged them to focus on their respective duties to ensure a smooth collaboration. If you do your job, and you do your job, we'll come together. I think JP was right. He's the maitre d'eux in charge of the dining room, and Van should have listened to him. What do you think, though? Ladies first. Ah, uh, JP, you'll always be famous. For the season 8. And you best believe I'm talking about Raj. Yeah, he was bad, but not as bad as people make him out to be. And honestly, I think Raj was sabotaged by Vinny too. Don't push the sides, so I'm I look good. I'm ready with the sides. Look, I got all the sides ready. I'm waiting for them to... So come. why is he not taking the orders? After almost everyone from the blue team was sent back to the dorms, he urged everyone to relax, which upset Louis. Louis shouted at him for being patronizing. You're 50, how dare you fucking condescend hey, Shut the fuck up. Listen, listen. How shut dare the fuck you up. condescend hey. me? The rest of the blue team sided with Louis and started throwing objects at Raj. Fucking douchebag. Go, bro! You're attacking me, motherfucker. Raj faced criticism from Vinny for improperly preparing parsley and was harshly criticized by Boris, who called him worthless. But in much, much harsher terms. Fuck you! Raj, you're a waste of life. Fuck you, bitch! You're a fucking waste of life, Raj. Absolutely unwarranted. You want to tell him that he wasn't being useful or contributing anything to the team? Fine. There are so many other ways to say it without being a dickhead. And Trev, who gets a lot of sympathy for being bullied by Scott Lee in season 18, was a bully to Raj and Sabrina, if you recall, in his debut season. You know, get through that thick skull of yours! Trevor's harassing me for no reason. He's being more of a problem than a solution. And Russ Hole joined them as well. If you talked to me like you talked to me before about that salmon, I would have slapped the shit out of you. I really wonder if they've watched the new seasons of the show, where people are so respectful of each other even during disagreements. They'd learn a thing or two, I think. Anyway, let's move on. How many of you found it frustrating to watch season 9 because of Elise's ongoing feud with Carrie? I sure did. I didn't let her cook it. She came over and grabbed it, Chef. Well, I was gonna cook it for you because we're all a team, right? These ladies were teamed up for the meat and grill challenge. But you couldn't have cooked up a worse pairing. Right from the start, there was tension between them. It began with Elise taking charge by telling Carrie to step back before the countdown even started. The mere sight of Carrie irritates me. Dang, back up off my arm, dog. The bitch won't let me do shit. As the second pair for the red team, their performance was disappointing. The only impressive thing was their filet mignon. Elise was quick to point fingers, blaming Carrie for their failures. It was Carrie's fault. She was just standing there bitching and complaining when she should have been serious about the challenge. Carrie's performance was lackluster, and although she did do okay, Elise didn't hesitate to highlight her shortcomings. Honestly, Elise wasn't exactly friendly. She outright bullied Carrie. The first time all the food was don't up there. Don't talk to me right now. No, Elise, I don't we got to hear what you got to say. Imagine working, living, or even being friends with someone like her. Every day it would be a waking nightmare. Anyway, the punishment they eventually landed was pretty brutal. Me, Carrie looked like she was enjoying it. She's probably had plenty of meat in her mouth. And the famous chef did his damnedest to hold Elise and Carrie accountable for the team's defeat. She fucking gets on my last nerve. And I get along with everybody. Following the family night disaster, Elise wasted no time in singling out Carrie once more. You f***ed up the whole rhythm of the kitchen and I, I knew this was gonna happen. You f***ed up I did. Yes, Elise, you did. Stop it. When Carrie tried to talk things out, Elise shut her down bluntly. Like, she really took Carrie's existence personally. Do you take medication? Elise, because I think that you Quit are living like in this. another world. Then, Elise took things up a notch, launching into a barrage of hurtful comments. She labeled Carrie as out of touch, a mere nuisance, and relentlessly criticized her for messing up all night long. Get out of my face! Just wait. You can talk to her later. She can talk up on the chopping block. That's when she can talk. At first, Elise attempted to deflect the blame by pointing the finger at the meat station for their problems. Elise, you're gonna blame me anyway. I caused it. I said if Carrie's on meat, we're 
when Carrie finally stood up to her, suggesting that Elise would find a way to blame her regardless of the circumstances, Elise doubled down on her attack, mercilessly highlighting Carrie's mistakes. Their clash hit a distressing low when Elise said something really, well, let's hear her say it. That's the entire night though. Well then, you're crazy. I said, period. End of discussion. Now I know. I don't want to comment on how she is in real life, but she was disgusting on the show. No empathy, no decency, just a plain awful person. Rather than just handling the situation maturely, she opted for belittling and hurling hurtful insults at Carrie. Her choice of words about medication and being crazy and all that? Disrespectful. It was totally disrespectful. And what's worse, she was perpetuating backward stereotypes about people's mental health. I'm not an alcoholic like you, oh, walking around with a whole God. bottle of wine with a straw in me. And it wasn't just Carrie. During prep before the fourth service, Elise began showing sous chef Andy some attitude, but Andy didn't tolerate it for a second. That's all we have? Okay, that's that's why I put eight okay. heads on there, because it cooks down. Could you stop talking to me like I'm your f***ing child? She continued to push back, oblivious to the fact that Andy held the position of authority. You need to calm down. I am calm, I'm just saying yeah, that. You're always talking back to me, and you don't need to talk back to me. And when Elise responded to Andy with nothing but condescension, that was the final straw. I'm here, you're here. Get it straight. Hello? I heard you. You're so fucking disrespectful. Someone definitely needed to put this bitch in her place. I think if Jason stayed any longer, he'd definitely have taken down Elise in season 9. I mean, he was a straight up savage. You had to have seen him in season 12, right? Like, for instance, what happened in episode 3 was insane. It was pure chaos after a disastrous service resulted in both teams being declared joint losers. This led to the nomination of three chefs from each team. Mike, he's poison for the team. Keep DeMarco, keep me, but get fucking Mike out of here. Yeah, everyone was done with Mike. Even I was done with Mike, and I wasn't even there. During the deliberations, things got heated when Chris brought up to Mike that he felt his role was limited to seasoning the fish. And, well, he wanted a more active leadership role that night. But before he could even finish, Jason cut in trying to defend himself, only to be shut down by Jason. Chris wanted to fucking be the first guy to lead. You know, it's not like one person just works and the other doesn't, you fucking idiot. Bodied. Or, uh, what do the kids say these days? Alright, oh, Jason aches. <sighs> but I doubt Mike would even understand what was going on. Then Chris shifted the blame to Gabriel. The situation escalated even further when Gabriel defended himself against the suggestion that he and Chris had performed similarly. Are you fucking crazy? You stood there like a bitch, yep. just standing there watching him. That's right, I did. So he and Jason soon found themselves in a hell of an argument. Go back to the grocery store, motherfucker! <laughs> Fuck Yo, me, you bitch. Now, fucking... Let him cook, man. Let him cook. This has to be one of the most hilarious HK takedowns. Anyway, the verbal sparring reached the point where DeMarco, Scott, and Anton had to step in before things got really physical. Shout out to our man DeMarco for being the first to intervene, especially considering he was smaller than both of them. But DeMarco alone wouldn't be able to stop what was going on. Mike was massively delusional, and Jason rightfully gave him a much-needed reality check. During the first service of the third season, things got so messy in the red team. When the women's order came in, it turns out that Bonnie messed up the risotto by adding garlic by mistake. This led to a big fight between Bonnie and Joanna. Garlic goes in last, y'all. It's gonna make that taste better. All right, all right. The shallots I first. hear you. Ugh, that was rough. But could there ever be a video about physical confrontations without Tiffany in the mix? When Tiffany told Julia to prep the apples, she thought she could do better by cooking eggs instead. 41 minutes later, both kitchens still hadn't served any appetizers, and Tiffany ended up admitting a certain something to Chef Ramsay. How long? We have to start it over, Chef, because the eggs are Seriously, how do you mess up something so simple? While all this was going on, Julia wondered why she wasn't asked to do more than just peel apples. Come on, ladies! I've down and been over there three times trying to help with them eggs. She could seriously outperform everyone on that team, and yet the disrespect? Chef Ramsay then told Bonnie to assist Tiffany, but Bonnie's nerves got the best of her, causing her to mess up the yolks. Come on, please. I can't, I, I don't know where to go now. By the time the dinner service hit the two hour mark, Julia tried to offer help again, but Tiffany shut her down. This made Julia break down in tears and confide in Chef Ramsay. Because I'm not, I'll, I'll tell you more. I'm over there. Okay, I'll tell you more. Why are you pushing me? Can you see what I'm faced with? Why are you crying? 
I really can't stand how the red team treated Julia like she was beneath them just because she didn't come from a fancy background like they did. They act like I don't like, I can't do nothing and they're not getting nothing produced. And Tiffany's reaction to Chef Ramsay comforting Julia? When Julia came up and said, you know, started bawling, it's like, don't pull out the whole team because you want your two minutes in the spotlight. Yeah, total jealousy. The way they tease and mock Julia was just plain sad, you know? Especially considering she was killing it that season, outshining almost everyone. They looked down on her for being a Waffle House cook, but let's be real, they couldn't even cook a quail's egg to save their lives. But Julia, well, she nailed it like a pro. The famous chef definitely recognized her potential as well. However, things got tense when Melissa's carefulness on Joanna's station led to another argument. Melissa, I have been cooking the same for the last She's eight the only one that Dude, she's telling me my is overcooked, and I, it's the only spaghetti that's done. Despite Tiffany's efforts to calm things down, Joanna erupted, blaming Melissa for ruining her spaghetti. But Chef Ramsay had had enough. You want to do it? How many of no, us No, I don't want to do Ladies, ladies, can we stop arguing? Yeah? And boy, did that help things out. Now, did I miss your favorite HK fight? Let me know in the comments section down below, or you can simply visit any of my social media pages and drop me a message there. Before you leave, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications if you enjoyed the video. And hey, don't forget to check out my next video right here since it's even crazier.